Hello world and welcome back to another mechanism tutorial where last time we created this absolutely fantastic suit and managed to learn how to jump really high. But today we are going to learn how to create some antimatter. So before we can get into the super phase shifter over there, we're first going to need a brand new gas being plutonium. We've covered polonium before using the fission reactor, and this is going to be very, very similar as we're going to still need some nuclear waste from the fission reactor. Click the link up in the cards if you want to check out that video. But first, we're going to need a brand new machine, that there being the isotopic centrifuge. The isotopic centrifuge is going to need one basic chemical tank, two ultimate control circuits, and six lead ingots. Now you only get one of these. Now this is made very, very very similarly to our solar, solar neutron activator as it can only be plumbed in the inputs through the bottom. So to actually just show that we may have fission reactor linked up to this we're going to be using this chemical tank here creative one pumping in nuclear waste into the bottom of here is being powered and is just simply turning nuclear waste into plutonium now to use the plutonium though we are going to actually need to make these plutonium pellets not the plutonium itself and for that you're going to need a pressurized reactor chamber we've made these many times in the past for this you're going to require water and plutonium of course and then inside you're going to have to put some of this fluorite dust so in inside of here let's just get a whole stack of it here and it will start crafting away inside of this you will get a little bit of a spent nuclear waste as you can see here it pumps out very very quickly but we have got some spent nuclear waste coming into this tank now rather it's just in here <laughs> never mind and then out here we are taking our plutonium pellets now you're going to need a heck of a lot of these and actually to make the casings for your super phase shifter so how about we now actually cover all the different components you're going to need for the super phase shifter. First, going over the SPS casings, just to shorten it down a bit, we'll be calling it SPS from now on. First, you're going to need one of those plutonium pellets, then you're going to need four polonium pellets, and then four HDPE sheets. Now, we've covered how to make these before as well. You're going to need a lot of these little casings here, as you only get one of them per craft. So you can see how this is a very, very expensive build, as you're going to need a lot of them in total to actually create this. You're going to then need some ports. These are the SPS ports. They're going to require one ultimate control circuit and four of these SDS casings. SPS casings, sorry. And you only get one of these per craft. Now, you are going to need a minimum of six to actually just turn the thing on. Then you're going to need an input, which is seven, and an output, which is eight. So you need a minimum of eight of these in total, meaning that you're going to need a hell of a lot of these SPS blocks just in order to make the thing itself, not just the multi-block structure. Something else you're going to need are some new supercharged coils. These supercharged coils are going to require to make a laser, lasers we have covered before. We're going to need two ultimate control circuits, three polonium pellets, and three copper ingots. Strange how such something so advanced is actually going to be using copper again. Now you want to get one of these, and you're going to need six in total. So it's again a very expensive build. Now the last thing you're going to need is some reactor glass. We covered reactor glass when we were doing the fusion reactor over there. So this is just how it's made. It's using one glass, three, four lead, sorry, and four enriched iron. And you actually get four of these at a time. I highly recommend building most of this SPS machine out of reactor glass. If not, all this glass that you see here will have to be replaced with SPS casings, and that's a lot more expensive. So as you can see, this is a super phase shifter that I had made earlier. However, let's go over how we make this for ourselves, just so you know how to build it. So just on the other side of the wall here, this is where we're going to make our super phase shifter. First, we're going to take our SPS port and place it down in the center here. Then you're going to want to go two out either side of our first port, and then we want to join it all up on everywhere so we get this sort of fat plus shape we're essentially making here a five by five square but with the corners missing next on the edge you are going to want to put these super phase conductors casings sorry super phase casings and then you're going to want to do a similar thing and make some fat pluses but on the sides now these fat pluses are also going to have one of these ports on the edge so don't worry this may take you a little bit of time but here is one of our faces and you want to do that on all three sides Perfect. Now we're not going to do the bottom for now as this is going to be our way in and out. So what we want to do is on the top, we now want to place some more SPS casings around the side. And then you probably guess it, you have to copy the bottom which we have there. So we want to make another one of these big fat pluses on the top, literally just copying the very bottom of this machine. And then we want to place another SPS port at the very top. 
So now let's climb inside. What we're going to need to do is take our supercharged coils and put it on every single side of these ports. We want every single one of them to have something and then we're done with the inside. Next, you just want to basically join all the dots up and cover all the circles that we have made in this SPS casing on every single side. This is what I mean when I say it's going to get very expensive very quickly in order to actually make this. And right there we saw the red particles which means this is fully formed however we are of course going to need an input of some sort and then we're going to need an output as well which we're going to put on the other side now just like everything else in the mod pack if we take our configurator shift right click on this you can now make this port an output and that's all there is input and output on the super phase shifter now by itself this will not do anything you can't just start pumping things in you actually need to power it and to power it you're going to need power on every single one of these ports that we have a supercharged coil on so for the sake of this what i'm going to do is just hold shift and put these creative ports on every single side uh, for you you're probably going to do a whole load of wiring like i did over there this is what i did i just put one super creative cube on top and then i just put some wires down either side and i very much strongly recommend you do not forget to actually do the underside because that's something a lot of people do they place it on all the outsides and then you're then they forget you actually have to power the underneath as well and here we go this is now a fully formed super phase shifter going back to the one we made earlier let's have a little look inside by itself it isn't going to be showing you anything it's just going to say it's idle but we can see that this thing only has one press recipe that's turning polonium into antimatter it does nothing else so this side we're obviously gonna have polonium and on the outside we're gonna have antimatter so to show that i've got polonium being created i've just got here a infinite chemical tank we've shown how to make polonium before so we won't be showing that today so we need to get ourselves some pressurized tubes to actually pump this in here we go we're going to take our pressurized tube we're going to plug this into here and now you can see that it instantly starts working there is no on or off on this now you something you must remember is you do not want to break these blocks if you break any of these blocks now what's going to happen is that radiation is going to get into the area so once you start pumping this up you can't start start changing things around unless you wait for your little um tube to actually empty but luckily for us we're in creative and we can just remove the radiation ourselves with a cheeky little command there so we have this going on and we can see that it's being creative now we are creating this at 1.344 millibuckets per tick which is a hell of a lot you can see that the energy input is actually 537.6 mfe per tick that is why we're creating this so quick if you're doing this very very early on you will not be having this maximum amount of power that you can actually get into this as uh, this is a little bit insane to actually make one millibucket per tick you're probably going to make 0.05 millibuckets per tick when you're going really early on now just as a little test for fun when, back when we made our fusion reactor we filled up this induction matrix as you can see here and i've got 1.62 pt not sorry not ptfe pfe ptfe is something very different and i want to see how much we can actually push our little f uh super phase shifter so as you can see even though i'm pumping so many more things into this i mean i can probably do loads of separate lines so i'm not being capped out on the limits of these universal cables but as you can see here i've only managed to jump out just a little bit here we're now putting in 694.91 and we're still only getting 1.7 millibuckets per tick so if you want to get anywhere close to actually having two you're going to need to be creating a lot of power but anyway on the outside of here we can see that we've got again antimatter coming out this is classed as a gas and we actually have this going into a new machine a chemical crystallizer the chemical crystallizer is being created with some fluorite we're going to also need four of the refined obsidian ingots one steel casing and two ultimate control circuits and this will give us our chemical crystallizer as you can see here now inside the ch chemical crystallizer we can see that we've got our antimatter going up and every 1000 minibuckets buckets is going to make one antimatter as you can see so that even though we've got this going pretty quick the antimatter is still pretty slow now when i started up our little machine here we only only had zero of this antimatter in here so in all this time we've only managed to get eight of these pellets so far and i'm creating antimatter rather rather quickly now the chemical crystallizer can be used for other things but we won't be showing that today that is going to be used when we go into times fiving our ores so now that we have this antimatter pellets what can we actually do with it now there's a few things some we showed in the previous episode where we actually made two of these mecha, mecha suit upgrades but there's something else we can do and that is by using the anti-protonic knee nucleosynthesizer 
I did that pretty well. Anti-protonic nuclear synthesizer. We'll go with that. So as you can see, that is being made using two of these antimatter planets, four of the atomic alloys, two ultimate control circuits, and a steel casing. You'll get just one of these. And this is what we got our little machine here. Now, if we click inside of here and do show recipes, it only has seven recipes it can do in total. All of them are using this antimatter. Now, obviously, this is using the gaseous form of the antimatter, so you can just plug your super, super phase sister straight into this nuclear synthesizer. But what you can do is actually turn your pellets back into your gaseous form by using a chemical oxidizer. So do not worry, you haven't lost it. It's one to one, still one pellet equals one full bucket of antimatter. But anyway, inside of here, you can change seven different things. Those seven different things are obviously blue wool, red wool, yellow wool, and gray wool, as well as tin, coal, and diamonds. Now, when you put all these things in, it's actually going to be very, very quick to actually create all the different items. But let's show you what they are here. You can probably notice here what it actually does. So starting with the blue wool, you will be able to get lapis lazuli. Then red wool, you will get a block of redstone. Yellow wool, you will get some glowstone. Gray wool, you will actually get a block of quartz. Tin gives you an iron ingot. Coal gives you a diamond and then a diamond gives you emeralds. And these are the only seven things that you can actually create using this machine here. So it's very powerful. If you wanted a lot of redstone, this is a good way of doing it. Obviously, all you need is a sheep farm to make most of the things. And then it's a very good way to getting diamonds considering you'll have so much coal probably at this point using different miners that you have in the game. Now, there is only one more thing that you can actually create using antimatter pellets, and that is using this supermassive QIO drive. Now, the QIO drive is going to be all about digitally storing all of your goods that you make inside of the game. So that is what we're going to do next time. Unfortunately, that is everything we have off the show today when it comes to antimatter and the super phase shifter. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's very, very powerful and very, very late game. So if this tutorial helped you out in any way, shape or form, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and ring the bell button for more tutorials in the future when obviously next time we're going to go over digitizing your items. But until next time, guys, take care.